Hi, welcome to Atlassian Tech TV. My name's Chris Mountford, and I take you inside Atlassian to show you how we make software. My guest this episode is QA engineer Siggy Bergeson. Following our regular format, this is a two-part interview covering in detail Atlassian's QA process from within the Bamboo team. Bamboo is Atlassian's continuous integration and continuous deployment server. It's a product designed to use automation to enable a team to deliver quality at speed. Siggy is the only QA engineer on that team, and he has a lot to share about how quality is achieved and maintained in Bamboo. We also get to know a little bit about Sig. So let me shift gear for, for a minute. Uh, so you're uh, not just your name, but also a little bit of your accent. Mm -hmm. You are not an, uh, an Australia, native Australian born QA engineer. You, yeah. you mentioned, you, you're, are you from Lund? Yeah, so, so I'm actually originally from Iceland, Reykjavik, oh. Iceland. Great. Um, oh, and I'd I love was. to go there. Yeah, you should go there yeah. anytime. Well, <laughs> actually, you should you should go July, August. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but <Understood>. but <laughs> uh, but I moved uh, to Sweden and to Lund when I was two years old. So so I've 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 grown up in Sweden and and I moved here to Australia two years ago. Two years ago, and was that for this job? Well, yes. it wouldn't. It was right. It was. And you're be, you've been. Uh, You've been working on other parts of the business and you're now on Bamboo. Yeah, I, I was working for the Fisheye and Crucible team oh, yeah. um, for one and a half year. Right, okay. Yeah. Got it. So, uh, what was it like? I mean, had you been to Australia before? No, I had never been to Australia before. Um, and it was actually interesting because... July is not the right time of year. No, <laughs> no exactly. <laughs> exactly. I came here late May. I'm actually having my two-year anniversary, I think, the day before yesterday. All right, congrats. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, I came here May, June, and it was horrible weather, cold and, and, and rainy. And you would say that being from the Nordic countries, I'm, I'm used to... The weather, however, uh, Sydney Sydney buildings aren't really built for this weather. Yeah, so, that's true. So People don't realise you can uh, feel the cold in yeah, Sydney. Yeah, so, yeah. The winters aren't that long, but uh, <laughs> without proper heating, you feel yes, it. Yes. And the uh, and another thing people don't realise before they come here is it can rain in yes, Sydney. Yes, it can rain a lot. <laughs> it doesn't just sprinkle. No, 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 no. All right. So, and what is it like for you? I mean, you. You've been here now two years, so you feel like you know where things are. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. how the place works. Yeah, it feels really good. I, I, I really like living in Sydney. So You don't so. have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. And uh, what, what else should we talk about? Have you got a Ship It project planned? Oh, so interesting, interesting. I, everyone has Ship It ideas and actually... Um, Ship it is next week. Um, I actually don't have any concrete plans yet. I've got a whole bunch of ideas, and I know people that have been asking me to join their teams. We will see, actually. Right. I, I haven't. I haven't actually gotten to plan that yet. Right. So ship it, of course, is our uh, hackathon, our quarterly yeah. hackathon that we that we do, which is a twenty-four hour competition, and there are mm -hmm. prizes and other kinds of madness. That uh, that everyone gets involved in, and uh, the idea is, of course, to ship something, to yeah. create something, and show it in front of everyone, and uh, get their votes, and, and also to, to to make something new and impressive, something valuable. So you're uh, obviously in demand across the different well, teams. Well, yeah. So the, the the funny thing is that you know, when doing a hackathon. Um, it, it gives you um, a little bit of a liberation of, of process, uh, if, you, if, if you say it that way. Of course, um, everyone wants their Ship It project to ship yeah. at the end of Ship It. Um, most of the time, however, they haven't really done the, their, their fair share of, of uh, QA and testing on yeah. those projects. And most QA within the last year actually build the stuff themselves. Right. Um, so a big part of being a QA at Atlassian, a part, we've talked about the QA process, and and we do a whole bunch of uh, quality um, uh, process improvements. But also a big part is making testing easier, mm -hmm. which means for for us it's about 
building utilities and tools mm. that make testing easier for developers. So we've got um, uh, so so we we've got tools that we built. Uh, one of them called VMAC. So VMAC is a web UI uh, where any developer within Atlassian can go to and 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 click. I want a Windows uh, instance with Internet Explorer nine, and and it will spin up um, an instance so that you can test your your changes that you have running locally. So right. to to check for compatibility with. Uh, browsers essentially right. and and that that is a tool to to make the life of developer e easier mm. so that they actually do perform the testing that is needed so right yeah. and a lot of so a lot of developers don't have those browsers installed locally and they yeah. don't have 10 or 20 virtual machines with all the different combinations on their laptops yes, yes. So they're running. Often they might be running, uh, you know, a Linux machine or a Mac or something, yeah. and they're not going to be running Internet Explorer without yeah. a virtual machine. Yeah. So VMAC is a, is a sort of a, I guess, a, some kind of portal, a provisioning system, yes. is it, or yes. an yes. access? Yes, right. that's true. That's right. And this is something that QA built. It's not just yes. something that QA. So it's a successful ship it project from yeah. uh, one of the QA engineers or several of the QA engineers and Costa and was yeah, Kostya, Kostya ran it and and actually when when um, that it has been built on top of a couple of times and yeah. involved uh, developers as well, uh, but it was essentially his tool. Cool. So right. and and I, so I've been spending my ship at um, um, enhancing our. Uh, we have a test data generation tool uh, that, through REST calls, populates instances of 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 the 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 um, products that we have. Mm -hmm. So um, for integration testing, for example, we've um, we can we need to populate data into a Jira instance with uh, commits from Stash and from and commits from Fisher and Crucible and and builds from Bamboo. So uh, being able to capture and and create all that data at the same time from the click of a uh, you know button uh, is is a very valuable thing uh, so that we can actually um, enhance the, the the testing that is being done uh, through good data generation right so that I mean that's always been one of the most complicated sort of test scenarios to me I, even if you have test data that you've created manually sometimes it's not good because a lot of these integration points rely on uh, time specific things like messages and the most recent commits yes. and these and when they're fresh then they show up on the top or they might say something different and when they're really old then they may look yes. completely different. Yes. So you need to have the repository, you need to have say Stash or Bitbucket talking about uh, you know, ver distributed version control mm. and the management and the rendition yes. of all the branches and commits. And then Bamboo, all the builds, those integrations are very clear yes, and very valuable. Yes. You need to test all of that. Yes. So you, so the way that this test tool works, it, it allows you to create that data set across multiple Yeah, so we, we, we uh, basically um, created uh, uh, this one tool that would be able to call uh, REST, uh, the REST APIs of the different tools. For Stash, we, would ha we have a Git um, so, so that you can populate with git commits and, and Jira has, has create issues and, and for Fikru uh, it, it was all create reviews mm -hmm. that are, are tied to the commits. Yeah. So, so the, and, and essentially we created the uh, fixtures for, for these. So uh, what is actually there now is anyone uh, within the last thing can go to a web interface with a, um, a big text area where they can create their own recipe and a recipe f with test data using the fixtures uh, that we've created. So we also, uh, I've provided um, a, a lot of um, ready-made recipes. So we've, we've got this um, integration path that we want to test. So run recipe with these instances and, and now you have the test data across instances. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of stuff mm. much easier. Yes. So I suppose all of this automation, including the test automation, which I think we should t we cover mm. as well, 
this is all about uh, allowing the, the development speed, allowing uh, yes. developers to spend time on making the features and getting that finished, yes. getting it delivered and having that value go to the customers and the users. And uh, so you also mentioned build engineering and how there's a, there's a you know, pretty close relationship between Bamboo building the continuous integration, continuous deployment tool, and build engineering responsible for administering and maintaining mm. an infrastructure that involves Bamboo and the agents for Bamboo. So how does that, uh, how, how does that work? I guess they're kind of like your first customer, but yes. at the same time, uh, you know, they, I guess your, your real customers are, the, are our, our, our end customers, but then you, you need to work together as well, so like collaborators. Yeah. So how does that, how does that work? Build engineering, uh, do they, are they responsible for, for getting the build results or are they responsible only for providing the physical infrastructure? Or? So they, they um, are the, um, the service. There's a, they're, they're like a service team to Atlassian developers. Right. So apart from maintaining our Bamboo service, they also maintain our Nexus and Maven right, right. Uh, and, and um, other infrastructural needs that we have for building our products. Right, so binary um, deployment repositories. Yes, 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 yes. So um, that's so they are uh, the interface towards Atlassian yep. and and they um, they also focus a lot on building automation to not have to reinvent the wheel every mm. time an an Atlassian developer needs something. Yep. So they they build tools sometimes on top of Bamboo and sometimes those tools actually get adopted into Bamboo and reach our customers. Um, right. So, so that's it's an interesting relationship, and and we have a very close collaboration in terms of the uh, chatting uh, in in HipChat. So, yeah. so we've got a room that where, where only we talk, and, uh, and but but they interface the organization in terms of I've got problems with this in terms of bamboo. Usually, that's a build engineering question because of the way they have set up Maven infrastructure, or yeah. things like that. Yeah, I'm, I've certainly been in that position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a new version of this build tool, we need a new yes. version of NPM or Node or whatever it is and yeah. we need to be able to build this thing. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's cover a little bit in a bit, bit more detail test automation. Mm. So this is where developers are building or, de or creating uh, software which is solely intended to to verify the presence of features. Yes. So where the it's test code. Mm. And pretty much all developers write test code of some form. Now you mentioned quite a few categories there: unit tests. Yes. Uh, you mentioned functional tests. Uh, also, browser UI, browser, web, driver. web driver tests. Yeah, where the, there's a full browser, mm. and, and you also mentioned uh, integration tests mm. as a sort of, I guess, a category. What are the? What do you see as the most important um, uh, mix? I guess of those. Or how, how do you? How does a team decide what they need? from those different categories? So there is a good practice in terms of what automation to have uh, to cover cover all your cases. And it's called the test pyramid. Yeah. Uh, you should have a good foundation of unit tests because they're quick to run and they, they, um, they're easy to maintain together with your code. And then you go as you go up, you, you need less uh, less of them and because also um, as, as you move up the pyramid they tend to become um, a little bit more brittle so yeah. if you're uh, relying a lot of you uh, about UI testing your web driver testing they can become flaky so so you've got unit tests on the base of the pyramid yeah, yeah, yeah. where they're a large in number and they run fast and then yeah. going up you have things that uh, integration tests or functional yes, tests and yes. up towards up to sort of whole system scale yes, um, yes. user interface driven tests mm -hmm. like the yeah. web driver or exactly. selenium tests exactly yeah, right. that, that's that, you, you basically said it. And actually, uh, I'm I'm um, inclined to put another one on on the top. Actually, um, so we we need to test our products for successfulness. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and and by uh, adding uh, analytics to our features, we can see if a feature that you know, of course, is tested by unit tests and integration tests and mm -hmm. all that. We also test analytics for usage and mm -hmm. and the successfulness of that feature, so that um, our customers are using it and they're finding it valuable, and they, they the the feature actually helps them um, do their job. All right. Yeah. That's. So. So that's, a, that's interesting because that actually requires the application to have already been deployed yes. and that customers are using it. And then after they've been using it, only then can you really discover whether or not they've, they've found the value in it, yes. they're using it. Some of the problems might not be that the feature doesn't work, but it isn't clear how to get to use it or yes. it's not prominent or it's not advertised. Exactly, or some other yes, thing. yes. Yeah, that's interesting. And. Uh, Right, so the test pyramid. Yeah. Uh, and when uh, when it so it's so I guess it's a pyramid because you have more unit tests. Yeah. Uh, I've heard it said that you know if you can t test something by unit tests, then you shouldn't you should test it by unit tests rather than doing something that might take longer, mm. that might uh, be more brittle. Yeah. Why are why are they uh, more brittle as you go up that pyramid? Well, because they have more dependencies, I would right. say. Um, so, for example, web driver tests have the dependency of a browser yeah. being spin up on uh, on an operating system, and the whole you know um, the whole application needs to be running uh, in in isolation, and and then you need to have uh, wait. You need uh, you're relying on weights and timings, so you yeah. got to have timing related flakiness and stuff like that. Flakiness, yeah, that's yeah. that's hell. I was talking to Nick Pello about. Oh. <laughs> Test flakiness. <laughs> he was cursing. That's that's why we have a project ongoing that was actually a ship it project with a flakinator. Yeah, um, <laughs> the flakinator. And, uh, and the flakinator is 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 a thing, and it, it is something that. Um, a lot of people and a lot of organizations have problems with it, and and the flakinator is actually built on top of an idea that came from a Google Tech Talk oh, yeah. on on how to um, rely. So some tests can be relied upon, and some can't, and right. and and a test needs to prove itself yep. um, uh, for 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 reli uh, reliability. Right um, over time. Over time and overruns. Right. So. Can you send me the link to that? Uh, yeah, I'll Let's see I, if you can find it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. It's 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 an ongoing uh, or, or um, work in progress uh, currently. Okay. Uh, oh, the flakinator is. Yeah, the flakinator is a very internal work in progress. Sure. But and I'll, I'll Google, send you the Google talk. Yeah, yes, cool. Because yes. I can I can link it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, Siggy. It's Thank been you very a pleasure. Much. And can, do, are you on Twitter? Yes, I'm on Twitter, and and it's at Siggy B. Okay. So, so I'm easy to find. All right. And I, I want to mention it one, one more thing. And it's actually yeah. a thing that you mentioned yourself. Uh, and uh, I didn't um, have, have the response at that time. But uh, the f quality assistance at Alaskan, uh, we're all about delivering quality at speed. Because yeah. we, we're helping with development um, and we need to release often and release with speed and develop with speed. So quality at speed is actually what we're helping with. That's awesome. That's, I think that's really what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hopefully get you back again sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> that's a wrap for another episode of Atlassian Tech TV. Please subscribe and follow us on Twitter. We've also got tons of stuff on our blog at developer.atlassian.com.